I ain't gotta say it, you should already know what time it is. It's up date Mondays. Ironically, Monday isn't a time, but um, we are gonna roll with it for now. What's going on with your big dog? It is a gorgeous Monday out here, and hopefully it's a gorgeous Monday for you, because today is a very special Monday for me. It only happens once every seven years, but as we speak right now, the comet is coming to give all of the firebenders special powers. Wrong thing. Today isn't really special enough for Fireload Ozai's comet to come through, but um, fortunately enough, I'm not even a firebender. I, I'm pretty sure I identify as an earthbender at this time. Today still very much is a special day for me as today is my birthday. So I just gotta ask, what you get me? No, 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 what you get me? Nothing is not what you got me. You got me something, right? 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 I'm not crying about not getting a gift. That's materialistic. I would never cry over something so trivialist. You are crying because you forgot my birthday, but I forgive you and I actually got a present for you. Today's video, I'm going to be giving you hope and preparation. I'm going to be talking about some strategies that could be meta if the forbidden list falls their way. I'll also even be discussing to you guys some cards that can realistically come off the forbidden list that could happen very soon and some cards I wouldn't necessarily count on coming off the forbidden list because it'd probably make this deck too busted. So with that being said, we're actually sitting on the stairs. Let me go sit in my birthday chair at least because you know, the chair didn't forget about my birthday. I'm not capping. This chair is comfortable. It's not even mine. It's really Sabrina's, but I'm commandeering it for today. One of the most popular strategies in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game just so happens to have quite a few cards on the forbidden list that if it comes out, boy, talk about top meta. Burning Abyss is a strategy that is based off of being able to special summon monsters to your side of the field when you don't control any spell and trap cards. The workaway around this is just special summon your monsters and then set your spell and trap cards forehead. Big brain. Burning Abyss also have some really powerful effects when they are sent to the graveyard. Monsters like Seer and Graph allow you to float monsters to your side of the field. And then there's Dante, which allows you to recur said Burning Abyss monsters to your hand. The cool thing is even with the restriction of you can only control Burning Abyss monsters or these cards are destroyed, this deck is actually really good at Link summoning. Being able to supplant Link monsters to your side of the field and then negate Burning Abyss monsters effects, preventing them from being destroyed is just something that this deck is pretty insane at. Also since Dante doesn't have that clause, it kind of helps the deck greatly. Now there are a few cards like I said before that can come off the forbidden list that would make Burning Abyss insane. Monsters like Fairy Tail Snow coming off the Forbidden List would be phenomenal. It also allows you to play boss monsters like Orbital Hydrolander and work around it, saying that you can banish the additional copies that you would send to the graveyard anyways. I do not see Fairy Tail Snow coming off the Forbidden List, but a card that realistically could come off the Forbidden List is Beatrice Lady of the Eternal. This card is the boss monster for the Burning Abyss strategy, allowing you to send cards from your deck to the graveyard. All you have to do is discard a Burning Abyss and use Dante, or... Just use the two level six monsters that this deck never had. If either of those cards come off the list, you can count on Burning Abyss being terrifyingly powerful. It'll be a fairy tale to reach the Lady of Eternal. Another strategy that can become irrelevant to completely meta tier overnight is True Draco. Now the True Draco strategy is based off of tributing your spell and trap cards to be able to summon these monsters, but the spell cards are actually insane. Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix and True Draco Heritage give you additional tribute summons on your turn and can also destroy spell and trap cards on the field when they're tributed. Their trap cards in True Draco Apocalypse and True King's Return almost do the exact same thing as they allow you to tribute summon but on your opponent's turn and can destroy monsters when they're sent from the field to the graveyard. Their monsters are no slouch and they completely complement the spell and trap cards as Ignis and Dino Might allow you to search or place True Draco spell and trap cards respectively to your side of the field or hand when your opponent activates monster effects. Now True Draco actually has a few cards on the forbidden list that if they came out, it would be a terror for a lot of reasons. One namely being Dragonic Diagram, this card allows you to basically search True Draco cards for free. All you have to do is destroy your True Draco spell and trap cards on your field 
and trigger their effects? And then is their boss monster in Masterpiece, which not only becomes unaffected by whatever two cards that you tribute, whether monster spells or traps, it can also banish a continuous spell or trap card in your graveyard to be able to destroy a card on your opponent's side of the field. This is a quick effect. Now the Ops wouldn't like any of these cards coming off the Forbidden List, and I would have to say that it's fairly unrealistic. A more realistic approach would be True Draco getting Dynamite the True Draco Fighter to three. I think that that would be extremely helpful, as cards like Anti-Spell Fragrance and Imperial Order are very powerful into this format, and it's something that True Draco can take advantage of. With players speculating cards like Maxi coming off the Forbidden List, True Draco would be a fine candidate for Konami to allow off the list to help balance those combo decks. Not sure if I can say this for everyone because there are still some haters out there, but it would be really exciting to see Orcus get a boost off of the Forbidden List. For the people that don't know, Orcus are a series of Dark Machine monsters where the main deck monsters are based off of banishing them from the graveyard to be able to gain some cool effects. Cards like Orcus Nightmare allow you to banish it from the graveyard to send Dark Machines, and cards like Orcus Symbol Skeleton allow you to banish it from the graveyard to be able to spell some Orcus monsters to your side of the field. Now the drawback behind these Orcus monsters is that if you use their effects in the graveyard, you cannot special summon except for Dark Monsters for the rest of the turn, but that's solved with some of the extra deck monsters. As Orcus Galtea allows you to shuffle in those banished machine monsters and then set Orcus cards to your side of the field, and Longirsu allows you to send any monster that is linked to the graveyard by shuffling in machine monsters into your deck. The deck also has a boss of an XC monster in Dengirsu. This card allows you to send cards to the graveyard non-targeting or can attach banished monsters to itself. The crazy thing about Dengirsu is that, just like Beatrice, there's no real way to summon this card like normally. Now there are a couple of cards that can come off the forbidden list that would make Orcus the downright instrument of destruction. Get it? Cause Orcus? Nightmare Mermaid is a godsend for the Orcus strategy as it can be linked by just going into any nightmare monster and it allows you to start summon Orcus Nightmare to your side of the field to start off your combo. I genuinely don't see that happening as that makes it a little bit too splashable. Almost any deck can make nightmare monsters but what I could see happening is Orcus Harpoor coming off the Forbidden List and has the same restrictions as all of the other main deck Orcus monsters, but allows you to spell some Orcus monsters from your deck to your side of the field. This alone could put Orcus in the top contention meta. I think players will be singing its high praises if it were to happen. Cause you know, instruments. Now Forbidden List or not, I genuinely feel that this deck just might be a top tier contender almost no matter what. Adamantipator is a deck that is built off of excavating rock monsters and then special summoning the rock monsters that you excavated to your side of the field. Your most important cards are Adamantipator, Researcher, and Seeker. Both of these cards allow you to special summon themselves to the side of the field if you control a rock or Adamantipator monster respectively, and then excavate the top five cards to special summon any of your level four or lower non-tuner rock monsters to your side of the field. So many monsters like Quacky Miru Guardian allow you to prevent yourself from being hand trapped earlier on, while so many monsters like Prank Kids Roxy's allow you to pop off, King, get additional monsters to your side of the field, draw cards for free, and extend your combos. Now, ever since the Forbidden List way back, Adamantipator has dropped from top tier to almost irrelevant. Banning Union Carrier was huge to the Adamantipator strategy, and to be quite frank, I don't think that this card should come back right now. A card that was actually banned because of Union Carrier a little bit before was Block Dragon. Now Block Dragon is a fairly powerful card allowing you to add rock monsters from your deck to your hand, but then you start to think about it and it's like, uh, kinda? I mean, let's face it, the real culprit here was actually Union Carrier, allowing you to equip Block Dragon from your deck and then get it to the graveyard was a little too much. I think it's fairly realistic to give rocks more support in Adam Antipater as well with the unbanning of Block Dragon, but like I said, I don't think that Adam Antipater really needs it to be a top tier contending deck. And the last strategy we're gonna talk about don't need your help because it's already a top meta deck, but you ain't hear this from me. It's, it's the worst deck ever. It needs help. It needs it. I just want these cards off the list. Salomon Great is the first competitive cyber strategy, and it's basically built off of being able to summon as many Salomon Great monsters to your side of the field so you can go into your powerful boss Link monsters. Now, the Salomon Great monsters have a diverse set of effects, but just about every single one has an ability to special summon itself to the side of the field. Take, for example, monsters like Salomon Great Gazelle and Salomon Great Foxy allow you to special summon themselves to the side of the field when a Salomon Great monster is sent to the graveyard or is summoned respectively. There's also monsters like Salomon Great Spinny 
and Jack Jaguar, which allow you to spell summon themselves to the side of the field while you have a Solomon Great card on the field or by returning a Solomon Great card to your deck respectively. This is especially useful because when you summon your Link monsters, you're not necessarily done. You gotta summon them again. Solomon Great Sunlight Wolf's first effect is nice. It allows you to add a fire monster when a monster is summoned under it, but its second effect is even better, allowing you to be able to gain a Solomon Great Speller trap card from your graveyard to your hand just by having it second summoned. Now this can be easily done through the effects of Solomon Great Sanctuary, allowing you to link summon a Solomon Great monster just by using that Solomon Great monster's material. Boy, it almost like all that special summoning is for something else if you have access to it. Salomon Great is one of the very few decks that can make access code talker at 5,300 attack and giving it the ability to attack twice as well as destroy three cards on the field. It is legitimately a game ender. And what exactly could help Salomon Great become more of the top tier than what it already is? Not much. You could give us both Salomon Great Gazelle and Salomon Great Circle to three, but I think that's a little unrealistic. What will be more realistic is giving us just Solomon Great Gazelle to three alongside of Solomon Great Mirage Stalio because that just feels like fair, I guess. One thing I will tell you is any movement off the forbidden list for Solomon Greats, and not only are we Solomon God, we doing a deck profile. Well, that is all that I have for today's video. If you excuse me, I'm about to go enjoy my birthday. I think I'm gonna buy a bike or something. I don't know yet. But of course, if you want to see more amazing content, then go ahead and check out either of these videos. But until then, I'll catch you on the next one.